Welcome to day four of the Explore Your Limits Challenge. In this fourth workout, what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore this concept of motivation that comes from progress. You know, as, as people, you know, most of us, when we are making progress, when we're moving forward, when we can see that things are going in the direction that we want them to be going and that we're getting closer to our goals, there is a certain level of motivation that comes from that. If you strip that away, it becomes much more challenging to stay motivated to do hard things because you don't feel like you're actually making progress towards where you're trying to go. You don't feel like you're getting closer to that end point. If you think about the first work, willpower workout where we were typing at pages, you know, you could see yourself getting closer and closer to the end of that assignment, that workout. Similarly, in the second workout where you're doing 500 step ups or however many that you attempted, you could count, you're counting them and you know that you're getting closer and closer. In this workout, what we're going to do is we're going to take that away. And we're going to do it by we're going to work on, as you can see in the background here, we're going to work on what some claim at least to be the hardest Sudoku puzzle ever. And uh, he, he, we're going to add a little twist to it. And, and this is what will make it interesting and, and make it challenging. So here's how it works. You, you're welcome to work on this for as long as you want. You know, that's you're totally welcome to do that. However, you have to, in order to complete this workout, you have to work on it for at least five minutes. But here's the, the caveat, here's the trick. For every minute that you do not solve at least one number, you have to add another minute to that minimum. For example, if I start and I go that first minute without solving any numbers, then I have to do work on it for a minimum of six minutes. If I continue and I go that second minute without solving any numbers, then I have to do a minimum of seven minutes and so on and so on and so on. What I am going to say is you can, you know, you can cap it and max it out at 25 minutes. So the most that you would have to do is 25 minutes to complete the workout. So again, just that here, here's the idea for every minute that you do not solve at least one a, a number you have to add another minute to that minimum of five minutes all right so let's jump in here and give it a shot see how i can do and just to give you some context i am by no means a sudoku master i honestly have probably done less than a dozen in my entire life and i haven't done one in years uh, aside from the one that i did a few hours ago just to, to give it a shot it wasn't this hard one it was the easiest one on this site so we'll see how it goes but uh yeah all skill levels are welcome here the point is can you maintain your sense of uh, willpower in the midst of not seeing progress which is likely to be the case okay here we go you want this to be on escargo that's what you're working on so uh, the link should go to that, but if it's not, then you can just click on there in the drop down and hit restart, and that will, um, you know, set this up. So this is what we're working on. You can type here, and that's where you're going to enter your answer in. But you can also work here, and these grids, you can eliminate numbers that are not possible by clicking on it and you know deleting, and it will update that accordingly if you then click out. So I'm going to. Okay, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this toggle plugin. We'll put it to act as a stopwatch for us. And now we can put Sudoku. And okay, I'm going to hit start. So that's tracking our time there. Okay, so what they talk about in the strategy, which I've only read honestly to be, you know, a very little bit about. Uh, it's often it's best to start with the square that has the most filled out. So this is the one square on the board here that actually has four. So, you know, I know, okay, just looking here, five would have to be here or here. Doesn't help me much. Yeah, nothing obvious I see, I see there. Scanning here. Okay, three is going to be in this middle row and it has to be in one of these two, but that doesn't help me narrow it down. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually just start eliminating these and see if that begins to reveal some, some strategies here. So for example, I'm going to click over here. 
So I know that can't be one, three, four, seven, six. Eight or nine is still in play there. Okay, one is out, three. Okay, so I'm already into two minutes here. So that means I am going to update this. So and that means I have to add two more minutes here. So not looking very good. <laughs> Checking out my time here. I'm honestly not sure if this is even helping. I'm starting to feel that, uh, so let's see where I'm at here. Okay, so. I'm There, so I have to add two. Starting to feel that sense of like, this is futile. This is like, you know, where it's like, okay, why bother? So I'm gonna have to push through that, fight through that here. Two. You know, I'm wondering if you almost have to, if you don't have enough information to be able to to actually like be able to know with certainty that a certain route is possible and therefore you have to kind of just start going and then making assumptions and then and then test it out later. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually not sure. Now I don't really know what else to do except to take these out. So I'm just gonna do this a bit more. Okay, so the two cannot be here, which means the two has to be up there or here. Let's see what we got here. The one is out, the two is out. Three, six, five, nine. Two could be anywhere here. That's the only two we have. Four has to be up there or here. Four is not going to be in the middle. So. I'm wondering what happens if I just. do that. <laughs> I'm guessing that there's some of you out there that actually know at least how to get started here. But I am I am at a loss, I have to admit. I do see that there's all these strategies here on the side, but I don't know them. So that's not super helpful here. Okay, where am I at on my time? I'm trying to, you know, stay. Oops. So right now I'm like looking for an escape. I'm like, okay, the idea of just like sitting here staring at this with no way of getting any more clarity is just like, ugh, um, very, very hard to, to continue. 
So we know like a seven has to be in one of these two spots. And could there be a seven there? There's nothing that helps us with that. So this seven, we know isn't gonna be there. So it could be here or there, which means it could be in any of those three squares. So that doesn't help us eliminate that. The seven over here could be here, it could be there. So again, we have all three squares in play. So, cause I'm just trying to say, okay, we have these two Okay, let's try, where am I on this? Okay, I'm on Bruce. It's starting to look, it's looking pretty certain that I'm gonna go the full time and have a complete shutout here. Just because it's the only thing I know to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit more of this. So. Okay, does that get me any closer? I feel like, to be completely honest, I feel like a part of me is just waiting, so. For this to end, like, it's just like, oh, just please end. There's definitely that sense of like, ah, oh, this is painful. Mentally, it's hard to stay focused. I just want to take the easy out, just, uh, you know, I want to, I want to, hit some take step button here and see the solution. Do I need to, what I'm uncertain about, and this is tied to my lack of experience with this game, is do I just need to make like a guess? Or is there a way to be certain? And then kind of like see the ripple effect of that. So where are the squares that I have the least number of remaining options? These only have three. Okay, so you can see this was at 24 and it went up to 25. So that means that one of those three is actually correct. So let me see what time I'm at. I might so I am, I'm going to give myself credit for one. So I'm, I'm up to the limit, but I did get one correct. And let me just, I'm just testing here to see if I can figure out which one. Okay, so maybe that actually doesn't mean what I thought it meant. But I know it was at 24 before and now it's... So doing this, actually putting something in, even if it's wrong, it's wrong. It has given me a felt sense of progress, especially seeing that go up to 25. I don't know if, if you noticed it being at 24, which I'm not 100% sure I understand what that represents. But to me, it, you know, it gave a surge of like, okay, surge in motivation. It actually gave me something to do where I felt like I could be productive and make progress. And so that helped a lot, but it's, it's, it would quickly lose its allure uh, if it's not actually making progress. Okay. Whew. Okay. So that was actually a really good willpower workout. I have to, I have to say this might, this for me at least was the hardest so far to contend with that feeling of not making any progress and just to sit there and have no idea how to move forward. You know, I'm actually glad for the sake of the, the willpower workout that I didn't know what to do and didn't know how to move forward because it, really made me wrestle with that internal feeling of like not making any progress and how do you still keep going? How do you keep your head focused? Cause I did lose, you know, I kind of wanted to drift away. I kind of wanted to, you know, just look for an easy out. And so not allowing myself to do that was really challenging. So 
Uh, yeah, this is this is a good one. I think that idea of progress is really deeply ingrained in a lot of us as as motivation. And so when we strip that away, uh, we can lose our will and ability to do hard things really quickly. And that, you know, a lot of things that we do, there's uncertainty around them. You know, think of any entrepreneurial venture. You don't know if you're actually making progress, uh, especially in the early days, oftentimes. And so to be able to stick with that, even when you're not seeing the visible signs of progress is actually hugely important. And so this is a great exercise for that. All right, well, th that's it for this willpower workout number four. I'd encourage you to really give this one a shot. Sit in that place of experiencing what it feels like to not be making progress, unless you're you know, a Sudoku genius, in which case this might not be a big challenge for you and might not actually work your willpower. But sit in that place, let yourself feel that because that is an ability you'll need going forth. All right, thanks for joining for today and we'll be back tomorrow with uh, workout number five.